Hello my friends, welcome to the Electric Viking. Fantastic to see you here today. Well, about 10 years ago, I rode my bike around the world for a year. Bicycle. I went through 25 different countries and got really sick along the way. Lost about 20 kilos in Asia and also in Mexico. But it was a really good experience and I got to see the world in a way that a lot of people don't see it. A lot of people, when they travel, they go to all the tourist sites. They kind of do the thing that most people do. I think in riding my bike in that way, in basically free camping wherever I had to, in going through all the places that you wouldn't normally see, I think I saw places in a way that most people wouldn't. And one thing I have to say is I don't understand why so many people bag out and criticize America. I absolutely loved America and I loved the way that Americans treated us. They were some of the most friendly people in the world. I was riding over a place called the Devil's Pass, I think, in not too far from San Francisco. It started hailing and it was a single lane road, pretty dangerous. I pulled off the road and was kind of cowering under a tree and a lady pulled up with her van and she said, get in the van and I'll take you to my place and I'll give you a meal. I ended up staying at her place for three days during a big storm that came through and she was happy for me to stay as long as I needed but after three days I was ready to move on. Anyway, I just had a meal tonight and I bought a bottle of ketchup. Now when in Australia here we use tomato sauce, not ketchup. I bought a bottle of ketchup and it reminded me of Americans and my experience in America. Anyway, moving on. One of the things I really don't like is the way that idiots say things that are wrong. Sure, it happens every day, but one of the repeated things I hear over and over and over is that electric cars pollute as much as gas-powered cars due to a dirty grid or due to our electricity grid having fossil fuels in it. And I often wonder, is this myth being spread around by people who are paid by the oil industry to basically create FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and to lie. Because there is a huge amount of information showing that even with a dirty grid, electric cars are still much cleaner than ICE vehicles. Now, a new study has dispelled the persistent myth that electric cars pollute as much as gas-powered cars because they charge on a dirty electric grid and mining for battery materials is polluting. Well, first of all, I just created a video showing you that about 95% of materials in a battery can and will will be recycled. 95%. Eventually, we will get to the point where we will have mined as many materials for batteries as we need and we will no longer need to mine for them at all. That is a fact. You can tell anyone that information because I have fact-checked that information and it is correct. Tesla has recently released their sustainability report and that has also confirmed this information. Now, while electric cars have no tailpipe emissions, unlike vehicles equipped with internal combustion engines, they still pollute through the energy needed to produce them like any other product and with the electricity used to charge them if it's not renewable. Now, obviously, a lot of people who have electric cars also have solar power, solar panels on their roof. They also often subscribe to local electricity companies who produce renewable energy. Now, remember, America's five largest coal companies all went bankrupt within the last decade. And every grid around the world is becoming greener and greener. And that, just doesn't, that doesn't just speak for the West. That's also true in poorer countries as well, where many recent solar tenders have gone for two cents or less per kilowatt hour. Anyway, it has been commonly understood that electric vehicles are still more efficient than their gas-powered counterparts throughout their life cycle, despite those sources of emissions. But there have been persistent and ridiculous myths pushed by electric vehicle detractors claiming that those sources of emissions actually make electric cars just as or even more polluting than gasoline-powered vehicles, which is bullshit. It is. A new study by the International Council on Clean Transportation, the ICCT, is debunking that with 
a global comparison of the life cycle greenhouse gas emissions of combustion engines and electric passenger cars. Now the ICCT looked at the entire life cycle from sourcing of the battery materials to the production of the vehicle, both BEVs and ICE vehicles, and then it compiled driving data in different markets to get an average life cycle emission from the use of the vehicles. The group then used the electricity mix of each region, Europe, US, China and India, to develop average lifetime emissions. It resulted in battery electric vehicles having far fewer emissions than gasoline powered cars in all markets. Now, remember, if you buy an electric vehicle today, you may still own that vehicle or somebody will own that vehicle in 10 years from now. And in 10 years from now, the global grid will be far cleaner than it is today. Far, far, far cleaner because renewable energy is consistently coming down in price. Solar has decreased in price by 89% over the last 10 years. And therefore, it makes complete economic sense for governments and power companies to transition to renewable energies, which they are right now. It's happening all over the world right now. So these statistics are the worst case scenario because next year, the global grid will be cleaner. The following year, the grid will be cleaner again. You get my point. Now, here's what the ICCT said. Results show that even for cars registered today, battery electric vehicles have by far the lowest life cycle GHG emissions. As illustrated in the figure below, emissions over the lifetime of average medium-sized electric vehicles registered today are already lower than comparable gasoline cars by 66 to 69 percent in Europe, 60 to 68 percent in the United States, 37 to 45 percent in China, and 19 to 34 percent in India. Additionally, as the electricity mix continues to decarbonize, the life cycle emissions gap between electric vehicles and gasoline vehicles increases substantially when considering medium-sized cars projected to be registered in 2030. Now, even in the US today, electric vehicles emit only a third to half of the lifetime emissions of gasoline-powered vehicles. Of course, the difference is also improving with renewable energy being deployed faster than any other source electricity generation ever in history. Now, still one of the biggest differences is that EVs don't emit concentrated toxic gases in cities, next to our homes, by our children's faces, or basically when you have no choice but to suck them in in traffic. Now, even coal plants, modern ones, cause much less health damage to us than ice cars due to great emission control systems and dispersing the flu gases to unharmful concentrations, which is not possible in cars. People digress from it by talking about non-toxic CO2, but this is the key point for why we should switch to EVs now. I remember many years ago, I did some kind of approximate mathematics on the emissions argument using data from the IEA. Now, it's obvious from these rough calculations that the worst case scenario is an electricity net relying completely on coal. That doesn't exist, but let's just say that's worst case scenario. Now, there's one state in the United States which basically represented that scenario at one point, which was West Virginia. Now, in this scenario, the, amount, the same amount of energy consumed from the electricity net versus from gasoline and diesel would produce almost two times the amount of CO2 emissions. But what many people forget is that an EV is almost three times more efficient than a comparable ICE vehicle. In fact, it's more than three times more efficient than a comparable ICE vehicle. So in other words, in a worst case scenario, driving an electric vehicle versus a petrol or ice powered vehicle will at least reduce emissions by one third. In a best case scenario, by about 90%. Now remember, most of the arguments omit this crucial fact. They compare the total BTUs in a gallon of gas to the equivalent kilowatt hours from a power plant, ignoring that a typical electric vehicle uses only one third of those BTUs for propulsion because they are so much more efficient. They also ignore the emission required to refine that gallon of gas and then transport it to the refinery and then transport it to you. I hope that's helped you debunk some of these arguments that I'm sure you've heard other people say and you've gotten frustrated about. Send them to this video. Here's some data that they can use to learn what is really going on. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.